Welcome back to the channel guys. All right, so today what we're gonna do is a quick review or comparison between the Commander and the Sherman. Two different wheels from two different companies, but they have a lot in common. And I think that um, the Sherman definitely led the way for the Commander. Um, but I also think that the Commander contains a lot of specs and features that seem to mirror the Sherman. So for example, if you look at the size of the Sherman compared to the uh, Commander, you can see that they're quite similar. We're gonna go into the dimensions in a little bit, but um, let's uh, compare some of their differences here. So with the Sherman, you will see that there are metal bars, front and back. But what's important to note is that they act as handles. On the Commander, there's literally no type of protection, but there are handles. Um, it's built into the shell, so at least you get that feature of carrying your wheel, a heavy wheel at that. Um, this leaves room for you, so you can you know, add on your um, aftermarket uh, bumpers or whatever it is uh, that you decide to put on to protect your wheel. So one point for the Sherman, because um, you know, the rail not only acts as a handle to pull up your wheel, but as a protection against crashes. So if we look at the Sherman, uh, what we really liked, or some people liked about the Sherman was the modularity. So if you crash the wheel and you happen to damage the light or the tail light, you can replace that with something else aftermarket or something directly from Sherman. Unfortunately with the Commander, that's not possible. If you damage your headlights, you might have to open up your wheel and pay someone else to fix it for you or go on some adventure to try to figure that out. So it's not modular. So one point, another point for the Sherman. Also, I'm not sure what material the Commander is made out of, but just by the looks, I can tell it is very sturdy. It's very strong, very durable. Um, let's hope it's not the same material as other Gotway devices. But we know that the Sherman was a very strong, very tough, very rigid unit. Um, in terms of the material they decided to use. So this thing is definitely able to handle a crash um, even without the rails um, because of the high quality that they decided to use um, on the body. I just hope the Commander has the same type of durability at least, especially without those rails. Now what's interesting um, to note, and I did forget to mention this, is that the Commander is a lot heavier uh, with the I'm sorry, without the rails, okay? So the Sherman is at 77 pounds net weight and the Commander is at 85 pounds net weight and yet there's no rails. So that's very interesting to note. Obviously we know it's because of the extra 400 watt hour battery, but still, and, and the heavy motor as well, but still, that's something important to note here, um, is that Sherman was able to pretty much give us a huge amount of stuff, a huge amount of features, um, uh, you know, in a very small package compared to that commander. Also to note is the trolley handle. Um, like I said, the commander is basically taking its cues from Sherman. We can see that the trolley handle is dead center at the top and that adds to the balance um, of the wheel. That's a good thing. Um, another thing to note is the LCD screen. A lot of people did mention that the screen seems very small for such an expensive wheel, but looking at it closely, um, I can tell that it's probably safer because I've seen some crashes with the Sherman where, you know, the screen seems to take a massive hit and damage, um, on some fault. So, I, I don't know, like there's a little ridge around the commander at the top, which in my opinion might be able to protect it. And the fact that it's small too, um, definitely allows it to um, get away from like major damages that I saw in the Sherman. So I don't think that you will be able to control a lot of functions on the wheel like the Sherman does. For example, you can control the speed, you can control, um, the lights, you can control the pedal angles, the pedal tilt, the speed, a bunch of things um, on the Sherman, 
I don't think you'll have that same feature in the commander given the size. So my guess is that, you know, that's just a display for, you know, pertinent information like battery, speed, range, stuff like that. Um, the Sherman just seems a lot more uh, fine-tuned for uh, someone who, you know, plans on not having an app. So uh, it looks like Commander decided not to go that route. Another thing to mention is that they're both 20 inch tire. Um, the battery, like I said, for the Commander is 3600 watts, so it's a lot bigger, a lot more powerful um, than the Sherman. The motor on the Commander is 2800 watts compared to a 2500 watt. Now what's interesting is the Sherman's 2500 watt motor is surprising actually for such a big wheel because my MSP torque is a 2500 watt motor and that's a much smaller wheel so you know it's really difficult to try to cut out the torque version msp i don't think it's that difficult to cut out the sherman i have seen uh certain races um held and there were guys riding the sherman although it's a fast wheel um it wasn't able to handle um hard extremely hard accelerations and and someone did cut out um, I went on the Wheel Live Rally and one guy did say he was also able to cut it out. So for such a massive wheel, 77 pounds, um, 2500 watt motor was not a good idea in my opinion in terms of torque. This is why it's uh, important to understand that getting a Sherman means that, you know, off the line you're going to have to take it easy. Whereas the uh, Commander, it seems that, I'm not sure... It, it seems that regardless if it's a speed version or a torque version, you're going to have torque. Okay, right out of the box. The torque version obviously is more focused around torque, but it appears that the high speed version might have more torque than the Sherman. So one point for the commander there because the max speed by itself is 50 miles per hour. We know how Gotway works. There might be a little buffer. So it might not be exactly 50 miles per hour for the high speed, it's a little bit higher. Whereas the Sherman comes in one variant um, that I know of, it's uh, the you know 2500 watt motor version, uh, estimated speed at 45 max. So that's the advertised speed. We know that guys were able to do a lot more than that, but uh, considering that 50 miles per hour is you know advertised as the top speed on uh, on the Commander, that leaves a lot. For interpretation there so that's good i like that the max load for the commander is 300 pounds the max load for the sherman is 330 pounds again this is very subjective 330 pounds for the sherman only means that you know that's what it's capable of riding with on normal conditions so if you're 330 pounds and you intend to you know torque that wheel off the line chances are you might go down because that 2500 motor is not that adequate, in my opinion, for a 330 pound rider trying to take off the line real hard compared to the Commander. So the Commander has a 300 pound max load, which is more than capable um, of handling a, a 300 pound rider trying to torque it out. That is the torque version, my, my guess. But I'm very curious to see how this thing operates um, in real life. The range on the Commander is 150 as advertised. Uh, the range on the Sherman is 128, but we all know that you know this, this stuff is designed for under 30 miles an hour, well under 30 miles an hour, and well under 170 pound rider. So uh, take that with a grain of salt, but either way, these things have big batteries and you know range is not gonna be an issue with either one. So one thing I liked about the Sherman is, again, it's um, dimensions. It's not tall, so there's not a lot of top heaviness. It's not too short. It's just perfect. It's not too wide. Um, and I really like the tire, considering how flat the tire is, which aids in uh, uh, the ability to remain balanced at high speeds. Um, so in addition to the Sherman being a completely balanced wheel due to, you know, how it's designed in terms of where the battery packs are placed and how the 
uh, motherboard is at the top and the, sh the handles, uh, the trolley handle is in the center. Um, all of that added to its performance and, and most of all, its stability. The Commander took a lot of notes here, a lot of notes. And I'm very, very happy about that. Very happy about that. So my guess is these, these wheels are going to be the most balanced wheels in terms of high performance wheels out there. But I think in my guess, just by looking at the specs, the Commander is going to outshine the Sherman for sure. Um, the only thing that's going to pretty much cause you to have, uh, to have any reservations for the Commander is the $4,000 price tag. But then again, in terms of availability, um, you know, you might want to get the Commander just on that. Um, there's really not much the Commander is offering right now for any new purchasers um, that the Sherman is not offering in terms of uh, ultimate performance minus the torque. Okay, minus the torque, um, I would say the Commander um, does not have a huge selling point per se. So it's a toss up at this point. If you want a lot of torque, or rather if you want options, the Commander is the way to go because they have a torque version and they have a high speed version. Whereas the Sherman, it's only a 2500 watt motor. Um, yeah. This is a this is this is a great comparison. These are great wheels. Okay, so now let's compare the Commander and the Sherman with this comparative dimensions and weight chart from eWheels.com. Check it out. This is very helpful because if you're uh, coming from any big wheel like the MSP or even the Sherman or the Monster, um, this is going to help you a lot. So first off, we see that the Commander is 23.6 inches high. The Sherman is 23.4 inches high, so they're neck and neck, okay? So it's clear that the Commander took a lot of cues from Sherman, and why not? It was a very successful wheel. The width of the Commander is 9.4 inches wide, and the Sherman is 7.7 .7 inches wide. Now, clearly, what that says is that the Commander is a bit wider in the sense that if you are the type of rider who likes to ride with a wide stance, then this might not be an issue for you. But if you're someone who's used to a very thin wheel, this is gonna be, um, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve here. Because not only is it wide, it's also very tall and very heavy. So maneuverability, taking off, turning, etc., is gonna be a little bit of a challenge at the beginning, nothing to worry about if you're used to a big wheel again. But if you come in from a much smaller wheel, this is definitely going to be a challenge. One thing I found interesting about the Sherman when I had it uh, for review was how quick it took me uh, to get up and, and, and start riding it because um, when I came from my 84 volt MSX, which, which was a very thin wheel uh, compared to the MSP, which was a bit thicker, it took me a while to get used to that wide stance. I didn't really have much of a wide stance uh, before uh, my MSP. So the learning curve was pretty steep. It took me about a month to get to the same riding level um, that I had on my 84 volt MSX with the MSP. So um, if you're coming from a bigger wheel, this might not be an issue for you. But if you're coming from a much smaller, thinner wheel, the Commander is going to be a huge, huge challenge initially. Also, we can see that the pedal height of the Commander is 6.3 inches high and the uh, pedal height of the Sherman is 6.7 inches high. So you have 0.4 inches difference there. That's interesting because the Sherman, although higher than the Commander, there was a lot of complaints about the pedal dip. And if you know anything about fast riding, maneuverability is very important. And in order for you to maneuver, um, you know, turn sharp left and right with no concerns or, or worries about pedal scraping, um, that pedal dip was an issue. From day one, it was an issue. And you know, I believe they had many iterations either on software or firmware to try to figure out how to fix that problem. Um, but short of a complete design change, um, it, it doesn't seem like they, they were able to address that issue. I think people just figured out their own ways. I know I personally, when I had it, um, I had to tilt my pedal back at least three degrees 
in order to handle um, the pedal dip uh, problem. So maybe that could be a solution for you, but the commander is not helping here because it's lower. It seems to be lower than the Sherman, which is very interesting. I don't know how that is, but it's it, it doesn't look low, but apparently on the spec sheet, it is low. Now, Commander is Gotway. I know they say it's not, but it is Gotway. And Gotway, the only time I had an issue with pedal dip regarding Gotway was on the Tesla. And once again, that was due to the low pedals. So it's possible that this low this low pedal height has a lot to do with the pedal dip, or I should I say the pedal dip is directly related to how low the, um, the pedal is from the ground because pedal dip is in, is, um, is inert. It's something that is inevitable on any electric unicycle because of how electric unicycles work. In order for you to turn, the pedal has to dip in order to give you that smooth turn. But because most electric unicycles pedals are pretty high, um, the pedal dip is not as felt. It's not felt as much because it's so high. But when you have a pedal so low, pedal dip is necessary in order for you to turn properly. But it's more pronounced because it's so low. So I'm very curious to see how Commander is going to handle this because I don't see how having a lower pedal is going to aid in any type of vigorous maneuverability, considering that this is a very fast wheel. It might be considered a cruiser, but still, um, any type of pedal dip that causes concern for maneuverability is not a good thing. So just for comparison's sake, we can see that the EXN, which is also another good wheel, um, in case you're in the market for performance wheels. So right now we really have three performance wheels here um, with big batteries. We have the Sherman at 3200 watt hours. We have the uh, Commander at 3600 watt hours. And then we have the Gotway EXN at 2700 watt hours. And the, the funny thing is the EXN has the same pedal height as the Commander. So maybe it's not an issue. It's, it's probably not an issue. Um, if you look closely, you can see that the commander's body is a lot higher than the body of the Sherman. So I'm not sure what is going on there, but 6.3 uh, inches pedal height does not seem to be a problem because um, I personally took a good look at the EXN when I saw it in real life and the pedal doesn't seem to be a problem for me. Um, if you look at the, um, the Gotway RS19, for example, it's 6.5 inches high. So it might not be an issue at all. And if you look at the, the monster, 6.5 inches. So it's, it's probably not going to be an issue with Gotway. Gotway has never really had issues with, with pedal dipping. I think it's the form factor of the Sherman that gave it much problem regarding the pedal dip. So, um, yeah, and not the height necessarily. So yeah, we're looking at really good wheels here, guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, and good, uh, good buying, good buying. Take care.